we're going to go back and we're going to go to step two. Now that we've written our secret formula, step two is C is for character. So the first thing we have to come up with is who's in our story, a person, animal, or I am. In this story, who are we going to come up with? So now I have the boys and girls talk in the class, and then I can pick an equity stick. So I have little popsicle sticks with every student's name on it. I pull a stick out so that I'm not put choosing the same student all the time. They will all have a fair chance to share their idea. We'll choose one idea and we'll put it on our organizer. Remember, when we're first learning this activity, we're all doing the same story together so we can learn the steps. Eventually, they'll come up with their own and write their own organizer. So let's say the kids say that it's going to be a person and then we decide on a couple of kids. So let's go underneath our character. Now, do we draw a real fancy picture or is it a fast sketch? Fast sketch. I'm going to draw almost stick persons. So we're going to have a little girl and we're going to have a little boy here. Okay, so now we have our characters, a boy and a girl. We could say a couple of kids, whatever we want to do. We don't know yet. We're just planning our ideas. We're going to go to step three, setting when and where is this story taking place. So when is it taking place? The time can be time as in daytime, nighttime, long ago. It could be weather for the time, for the setting. It could be rainy day, windy day, snowy day. It could be a season, winter, spring, summer, fall. So you want to make sure that you're saying this to all the kids, giving them different ideas. So maybe these kids are saying a summer day. So we're going to have our summer. Look at this. I'm going to put a sun there very quickly so I don't have to write it down. So on a summer day. Now I need a where. Our kids can't be floating in the air. Where are they? And the kids, again, are going to talk to each other. We choose an idea and maybe we came up with down at the beach. So we draw some water. We're going to go back because we have our setting and our character. And this is going to make a sentence. So we're going to go back and we're going to say our sentence so far. Put a sun up. So again, you're always having, you're going to orally rehearse and you want to have physical motions to pull in all those learners in your classroom. Let's put a sun up. Um, how about we say on a summer day down at the beach, two kids, just like that, or a boy and a girl, doesn't matter. So let's go back and let's say it one more time. On a summer day down at the beach, two kids, all right, now we're going to go to step four. Action. What is step four? Action. What are the two kids doing down at the beach on a summer day? Your kids are going to decide. Let's see. It's down at the beach. It's really hot and summery out. What are they doing? What's happening? Oh, they're going to go in the water. So they're going to go in the water. So let's put some water here and they're going to go in the water. So they went in the water. And when we write stories, most of the time, stories are going to be written in past tense. So we could say they went in the water. Now let's go back and practice our whole sentence. On a summer day, down at the beach, maybe we can go like this, beach. On a, on a summer day, down at the beach, two kids went into the water. Well, we could say went into the water. Let's make some muscles. That's our action word, went. That's a verb. Everyone make a muscle and say, went. Ready? Went. And say, that's a verb. That's a verb. That's the most powerful part of speech. Everyone knows that. And so we yell that out, and then I go, let's go ahead and kick went up a notch. Let's make it really powerful. Do we want to say they went in the water or jumped in the water, dove in the water? How do we want to say it? Oh, jumped in the water. Okay. How about we even write jump here just so that we can remember that? jumped. I know it sounds like a T, but what letters are at the end to tell me they already did it? E-D. That's right. So now we go back and let's say our whole sentence. On a hot summer day, down at the beach, two kids jumped into the water. Well, let's add some punctuation. So we can take out our pens and we have on, so we're going to write O-N, so that we have that capital O, on a hot summer day down at the beach. That's my setting. And after my setting words, I need a comma. What do I need? Comma. Two kids jumped into the water. Now let's add our period. And we add our period. Now before we go any further, remember, we could add fancy words 
while after we make our sentence, or we could af have it after we do the whole thing. Many times I like to add describing words on the first sentence, and then I like to do the whole organizer, then go back and add fancy words to those other sentences. It really just depends, and you don't have to keep it to an exact science when it comes to the fancy words. Let's add some fancy words. So first thing we need to do when we add fancy words is we always have to say, what's the most important thing in this sentence? Is there one or two important things in this sentence? Let's see. Uh, the sun, the beach, two kids. Ooh, the two kids are important. Yes, they're very important. And then what do they do? They jumped into the water. So that's something they jumped into. So that's important. Let's put an X there too. Now we're going to go back and you can show your two cards. We're going to ask the words, what kind of, and then we're going to put the noun in there. So we're going to go over to the kids and say, what kind of kids, and then we're going to say the sentence so that we keep the context of the sentence to help us come up with describing words. What kind of kids would jump into the water on a hot summer day? And then do I need to describe what the kids look like? Like tall, young, do I need to say how they feel or their personality? So if it's really hot and they jump in the water, maybe I need to say how they feel. So how do they feel if they're jumping into the water? Maybe they're all sweaty. Yeah, let's put sweaty. Two sweaty kids. What kind of water would two sweaty kids jump into? Refreshing, cool. Ooh, let's say cool and refreshing. Maybe we could do that. So we could have one or we could have both. Doesn't matter, or you choose the one you like. We're going to put a line because we're done with our story opening. Story opening, check. Now let's go back and let's read the whole thing. Go. On a hot summer day down at the beach, two sweaty kids jumped into the cool and refreshing water. All right, let's try it one more time. On a hot summer day down at the beach, Two sweaty kids jumped into the cool, refreshing water. All right, that's our story opening. Now where are we heading? We're going to go over to our actions, actions, actions. And those are three steps that we keep repeating over and over and over again until the story's done. So we go back and we say, all right, story opening, and we have our SC arrow. Now what do we need? Actions, actions, actions. So let's look at our first action. Draw an action box, so I need to draw my box. Now I need to ask, put my hand on my shoulder and say, what happened next? So we're sequencing. What happened next after they jumped into the cool, refreshing water? So you have your kids talk to each other. We're coming up with the idea. We're not worried about forming a sentence yet, just the idea. What if the kids are having trouble coming up with some ideas? What if they're just saying, well, they're swimming around, they're swimming around, they're not really giving you much, then you may want to say, let's make it interesting. Let's choose an emotion card. So we could pick an emotion card and, ooh, something happens that scares them. Now turn to your buddy and come up with what would happen if they're in the water, they're in the ocean, and they see something or something comes up and scares them. What would happen? So the kids talk and maybe one of the kids say, oh, they see a shark and really far away. There's a shark. They see like the fin coming out of the water. Okay, so now what do we do? After we've talked about this, the idea, then we have our water. We show the fin coming out of the water and then we have the two kids over here and we have to have that scary look like, oh no, shark. So we're on our picture for our idea, what are we going to do now? Go back and reread our organizer so we can form this new sentence. As the teacher, you're always going to say when you go to the sentence that they need to form, who's doing the action? Action, what are they doing? We'll go over here and we'll say, on a hot summer day down at the beach, two sweaty kids jumped into the cool, refreshing water. Now we go back and we say, who's doing the action? The two kids. Uh-oh. Woo, woo, woo. Redundant police, redundant police. Good writers don't keep saying the same important words. What's another way to say the two kids? Oh, let's use the pronoun, they. So now we go back on a hot summer day down at the ocean. Two sweaty kids jumped into the cool, refreshing water. They, action. What happened? What did they see? They saw 
a shark's fin pop out of the water. Okay, let's say that now. They saw a shark's fin pop out of the water. Wait a minute. They saw. What's a more powerful way to say that action instead of saw? Should I say they gazed? Does that make sense? Like when you gaze at something, you think it's wonderful? Or maybe they spotted? Like they suddenly saw it? Should I say that? Yeah. Spotted sounds like it's more of a word that they would use to see it. So instead of saying they saw spotted, that sounds like they saw that and it's really important that they saw it. They spotted it, like they located it. Oh no, there it is. They say they spotted a shark's fin pop out of the water. Hmm, I already said water up here. What's another way to say it here? Ocean, okay. We said our whole sentence. They spotted a shark's fin pop out of the water. Let's go ahead and add a transition. Step three. I could just use the word they, the starter sentence, or we could add a transition. So I could say, ooh, when did it happen? Suddenly they spotted a shark's fin pop out of the water. Or we could say, where did it happen? Off in the distance, they spotted a shark's fin pop out of the water. So let's use off in the distance this time. Or suddenly, does it matter? No. So you may have the kids choose. Let's use off. Do I need to write the whole thing off in the distance? Everyone look at your partner and go, no, I only need the starter word. Would I say off, they spotted a shark's fin pop out of the water? No, that's just reminding me how to start that transition. So let's see, we have off in the distance, so let's do it, ready? Off in the distance, they spotted a shark's fin pop out of the water. All right, let's go back and reread the whole thing. So now you're gonna have the kids reread the whole thing before we go on to the next sentence. Now this is when you need to decide though. Am I going to add my capitals and period? Am I going to add my fancy words? From every sentence here on, you could just make the ideas, add action boxes, and then when we're done with the whole thing, we can go back and add fancy words and do the capitals and stops. That's what I would suggest that you do when your kids get pretty good at doing this. So let's go back and let's say what happened next. So we had our transition, and now what do we do? We go back and we repeat the actions. Are we done with our actions? No. Is the story over? No. So what do we need to do? We need to keep going in our actions. So what's the first thing we say is, what happened next after they spotted the shark's fin pop out of the water? So we draw our action line. Now they're going to come up with their ideas. What would the kids do? What would the shark do? Who's going to do the action, the shark or the kids? So they all, they all start talking and they decide, let's say that um, the kids start to panic and they wave their arms and they're splashing all around. So what do we do? We're just drawing the picture of the kids. We're not coming up with the sentence. We were talking about it. They're splashing all around. Oh no. They're waving their arms in the air. 